Hi friends, welcome to episode 6 of Thief. In this episode we're gonna start sculpting the cloth and clothing on this figure. Starting here on the tunic, and uh, as always I'm building up the forms and creating the general movements before I come in and start uh, really defining what's going on with a sharper tool. Cloth is a really can be a challenging and also rewarding material to sculpt. Being able to represent something so complicated and delicate is uh, a skill that has always been really prized in, in sculpture. And it's, it's really no different in miniatures, though there are considerations that are different. With, uh, with sculpting miniatures, you always have to keep in mind that it's going to be tiny when it's done. So unlike a big sculpture by Michelangelo, you don't, you don't have that life-size, perfectly believable representation. You have to use techniques that will be recognizable and representative of how things are behaving, and particularly in this case, how cloth is behaving. Uh, that people will be able to look at when it's tiny and uh, understand and believe and definitely they need to be able to paint it. So whenever I'm creating a big fold in fabric or big uh, creases, I want to keep in mind that it needs to be paintable and how highlights are going to work on it and, and really think about the finished product. Now throughout this process you'll see me uh, jump around quite a bit. So now that I've finished the tunic I'm going to go into the belt and uh, and I'm, I'm working on refining each of the tools that I laid out when I was blocking out the figure and starting to sculpt in details. And even though I'm focused on her clothing right now, if I notice that her head needs adjustment or that the rope needs to be pushed this way or that, um, I always try to do it right away while I'm noticing it, while I'm thinking about it. I talked a little bit about it when I was uh, laying out the shapes, but here you can see in practice what I, what I meant. I, I just cleaned up the thigh and added some definition to the muscle groups that are in there. And now on a larger, we'll call it like a pant layer, I am able to sculpt on that and never have the figure get cut in deeper than where her leg is. So we can just assume that the cloth is, is smooth against her skin where the thigh piece is visible and then I'm able to pull out and create the, the greater shapes and uh, movement of the cloth. Now going into the other leg, it's in a different position, and so I smooth it out and then I use a tool to cut in at a distinct muscle point. So there in the quadricep and at the, at the gluteus maximus, and then now working on the pants again. So. Uh, always considering how the fabric will be folding, and then also trying to make sure that I don't get too detailed for a figure that's going to be so small. It's always a delicate balance. I go back and forth trying to create uh, wonderful detail that's going to delight my audience uh, without creating detail that's going to be impossible to paint and frustrating to my audience. So as you paint one of my sculptures, my goal is that you're going to have fun painting my sculpted details uh, and not have frustration that there's too much going on and it's unpaintable because the details are so small. Now here I go into uh, creating the knee pad. I, I tried a couple of different methods, some, some of the like 
normal hard detail processes that I would use for armor. But then looking back at the concept art, it's more of like a, a soft pad than an armor piece. So I, I decided to cut into it and create something that looked a little bit more like cloth, handmade cloth knee pad. Um, and then shaped it to the knee, redefined some of those details. And I think I was able to create something that's pretty true to what I had in mind in the concept art. I jump around quite a bit, and that that's always uh, part of an important thing, is to be open and ready to go back to spaces that are already worked on, and uh, be really fluid in how you do your workflow. So here uh, I'm able to duplicate the knee pad and the top of the shoe and move it over to the other leg. And then once they're in place, think about how they're working. And uh, in this case, the knee pad got added after I had already done some of the work on the pants. So I had to change the pants. So there you can see I went through and was able to add some pretty good detail and express the fabric in a way that is going to be uh, both interesting to look at and also work at that extremely small scale. <laughs>